Good morning. Thank you, Joe, and thank you for the introduction. It's a great pleasure to be able to join you today. Um, after having listened to the interesting speech by the Prime Minister going into the situation and the ambitions of Croatia, I will make a few more general remarks about the EU strategy and where we are. First of all, I think if when you look back at the previous crisis, the financial crisis of 2008, uh, Europe has acted so much more decisive, so much faster than last time. It's very, very different. I mean, last time, the first four years were spent by internal fighting and debates about how Europe should react, whether there should be a common reaction, a joint approach. And it was only in 2012 when Mario Draghi in the summer said, we will do whatever it takes. Uh, only a few weeks after the government leader said, we will set up the banking union. Uh, and it was only at the end of that same year, 2012, when the ESM treaty became fully effective and the ESM uh, joined uh, in fighting the crisis. So it took four years effectively before there was a common Eurozone answer. Um, this time it was very different. Uh, already in March, the ECB uh, introduced the uh, pandemic program uh, to enter into markets even more aggressively and offensively, uh, supporting the uh, economy. It was, I believe, in May when the first package of support came about, including 250, uh, 250 billion from the ESM, which, by the way, hasn't been used so far. Uh, 200 billion additional scope for the EIB, the investment bank, uh, and 100 billion uh, came from the European Commission to support countries uh, with the program called SURE, which uh, supports the income of people who are in threat of losing their jobs throughout the EU. So that was the first package already in March. And then in July, of course, the agreement came about uh, regarding the Recovery and Resilience uh, Fund. This has been a major breakthrough. When I think back on the difficult discussions we had on what joint responsibilities uh, and joint instruments we should have, in particularly in the Eurozone, this really is a breakthrough. 750 billion, part grants, part loans, but in particular the fact that it is financed by common debt that the European Commission can take on debt to these numbers really is a political breakthrough for Europe uh, and in particular importance for the monetary union. Now, also the fact that the uh, different member states have agreed to allow the Commission to work on um, uh, getting the funds together through taxation. So a number of European taxation possibilities are on the table now, which were completely uh, off limits, politically non-discussable, non-debatable in the past. So again, a breakthrough. What are the challenges ahead? Um, we have to realize that the funds will only come available gradually uh, which is a great disadvantage in the current state of affairs. We would need to support the economy much faster. And I'm worried about the speed with which the uh, RRF funds are uh, becoming available. In fact, the SURE program, which I believe delivered uh, 1 billion to Croatia, uh, is much more direct and much more fast and really supports demand in a very direct way. And I believe it will be wise for the European countries and the European Commission to lengthen the SURE initiative uh, and to expand it into uh, this year and next, create a bigger uh, power to support demand in our member states. And of course, to speed up where possible uh, the process of getting the funds available from the uh, restructuring uh, fund. Other issues also remain is the fact that the Commission can now take on debt. Is this a structural issue or is it a one-off? Will it be done in the future in order to step in when there are crises, particularly for the Eurozone? This is, of course, uh, an important question. Uh, the debate about having a fiscal capacity for the Eurozone 
uh, long term still hasn't been uh, finally decided. Structural reforms are needed. Now, the national plans that are being put forward should address the structural reforms, but I'm slightly worried about the quality uh, and the ambition of the structural reforms in different countries. Uh, structural reforms are never very popular. National politicians always have a new election coming up. And I've experienced, uh, for one, what these national elections can bring about. Uh, and yet we have to make Europe more competitive. We have to create a better business and investment climate. So work really needs to be done there. And finally, the big question is, how far does the stick of the ECB reach? Um, there are still legal questions which will come back to us in the future regarding the mandate and the scope of the mandate of the ECB. So we cannot depend for a too long time uh, so much on the ECB. And national politicians will have to step up uh, to create a, a better business and investment climate uh, in Europe. Uh, and that, I think, is uh, a matter of great urgency given the fact that the USA is showing a much stronger recovery right now than the Europeans. So uh, speed has to pick up, funds need to come available as quickly as possible. And also at national level, we will need to have ambitious reforms. I'll stop here for now.